life before 180TC, um, it was good for the most part. I had some uh, good jobs, uh, worked for places like Commonwealth Bank and Microsoft and um, had my own unit you know, with everything I've always wanted, video games, TVs and um, I was very empty, like I just had this depression that would never go away and, and then I started experimenting with, with different drugs, um, pot and ice and um, you know after a couple of years of trying it out it's sort of got out of control and um, you know I lost my job, uh, lost friends, uh, lost the unit I was in and um, was pretty much broken and homeless at the end. Uh, the tipping point for me um, when I was at Microsoft um, I was towards the end I was a bit tardy and I was late for work and you know, that was due to depression, anxiety and, and substance abuse and uh, my old boss Nick sat me down and said um, look you you need to get help you know you need to uh, seek help for your depression um, and any other obstacles in your life and um, you know get it, get it sorted out quick smart and at the time I, I took his advice but didn't really think about rehab at all I tried to fix it on my own accord um, but then um, like I said before when I was homeless I think that was rock bottom for me so um, I knew I had to make a call, so I, I called 180. First impressions. Um, well, coming up the driveway, I thought to myself, the GPS must be out of date because there's no rehab here. I mean, there's just trees everywhere. Like, where are we going? Are they taking me to a psych ward or something? I had no idea. Um, and then uh, finally I saw the sign. And um, first impressions, I, I had this real, real peace, you know, come upon me. I just felt really uh, relaxed. And um, you know the boys were very, very kind and welcoming, um, and I knew that I was going to be here for a while because it was just a, you know, a good place to be. Um, so yeah. Biggest challenges for me, um, one in particular. Uh, four months into the program, um, I was exited for not uh, listening to um, policy and procedures. And being on the outside, I realised, you know, I'm getting kicked out of houses and now I'm getting kicked out of rehab. So obviously there really is something wrong, you know, and um, I thought, do I stay out there and just try to get work again? And I don't know, something just told me to come back and finish what I started. So I came back and ended up doing the entire 12 months. So I did like 17 months in total. Um, probably the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, had a lot of challenges along the way. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd say probably that's the, the biggest obstacle I've had to overcome coming and finishing it. The biggest highlights for me, um, there's two that, um, that are in my mind. One is uh, captaining Fiji with Matt Bevan uh, during the 180TC Olympics. That was a great honour. Uh, we did come last but you know we're under the salary cap I've got to say but um, no, that was an awesome um, experience for me. And um, catering with Ray McCarthy at the uh, at the annual bike ride for 180TC to raise funds to keep this place up and running. Um, that was a great honour for me, so definitely those two highlights. Well, there's a few um, that ring, ring in my mind. Uh, Josh Kelly, um, you know, he's seen me through some tough times, you know, at the beginning until the end. Um, my caseworker, James Haynes, I, I specifically chose him when I came back the second time because I just knew that, um, you know, he'd be able to, you know, dissect any, um, any flaws in my character and we'd be able to work on it together. Um, Troy Kiddo has uh, given me a lot of words of wisdom and finally Russell Byrne uh, who used to be program coordinator here he um, he gave me a lot of tough love along the way um, and you know some of the words he's, he's told me in the past just still illuminate in my heart and in my mind um, so I'd definitely you know put my hand up for Rusty he's definitely one of the guys that um, was the biggest inspiration for me. My final encouragement to the current students, um, don't be afraid to give God the steering wheel. Don't be afraid to just completely surrender your ego, everything about you to God and let him take full control because that's what I did the second time I came around and uh, I've seen the fruits of the labour. Um, and to the boys that have come into the program and have left and come back, um, stick it out. You know, If I can do it, you guys can too and it's the most fulfilling feeling at the end.